I'm a former NFL athlete turned life coach. I've been doing life coaching for men and women, a bunch of different demographics of people over the last seven years. I've traveled and lived all over the world. And I seem to always find my way back to Miami. Everything I do in my life is based around improving myself to become the most authentic version of me and thus giving other people the opportunity to do the same so they can attract whatever they want at the highest level and feel really good about it. I'd rather constantly put myself in circumstances that are relatively uncomfortable for me to be able to learn from those situations so I can actually learn, not have the mental idea of how I think things work based off of a book that I read or hearing somebody else talk about it. So football was done in that moment and there's nothing else I could do. My agent's like, dude, you're done. You could somehow find a way to get surgery, but if you don't make it your first year, then you're making it slim to none. And I don't want to go through that. So when I knew football was done, it was over, I at least knew that I gave everything I could. Did you already, did you get, get the, did you get the surgery? How much do you cling to life? How much do you try to control? Or how much do you let go and allow God to really take the wheel and allow the inspiration that you're talking about, the download, God speaking to you, to take the wheel and you'd be, I don't know where the, this is going. I don't know where this is going to end up, but I know it's right. I have to do it. That's faith. Amen. That's a belief in God. We're here at Vice City Kava. This is a really cool place. Make sure to get your Kava drink, Kratom drink. They have many different things for you to enjoy. So if you need to study, if you need a place to hang, this is a spot. But with no further ado, I have my brother, Kian Lagi. What's up, what's up? How's it going, everybody? I'm excited to be here. We're gonna have some great, great conversations. Great combos. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is this is a really cool guy. Met him recently at the Coconut Grove Farmer's Market. And the, the way we chopped it up and the way we were talking, I was like, okay, the, the way that this guy thinks is solid. And I was like, man, like, I, I need to have you on the podcast. But before we get into that, Kian, could you please explain what you do and what you're about? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a former NFL athlete turned life coach. I've been doing life coaching for men and women, a bunch of different demographics of people over the last seven years. I've traveled and lived all over the world. And I seem to always find my way back to Miami, which is my home base. I'm going to do a lot more traveling coming up, but everything I do in my life is based around improving myself to become the most authentic version of me and thus giving other people the opportunity to do the same so they can attract whatever they want at the highest level and feel really good about it. That is really strong. I mean, I think a lot of people nowadays are, are looking for answers because I think with the internet, people are, are swiping and they're constantly in this dull state of looking at their phones, and, but they're not really doing anything. There's no action. There's a lot of sitting back and overanalyzing without even doing stuff, but then they don't know how to start. They don't know. They know they need to be a better version of themselves, right? They see other people being successful they see other people with these great bodies or whatever it is but yet they're the, a year passes two year passes and they're still in the, sitting doing the same thing mm -hmm. right what would you say to somebody like that that's kind of stuck in that kind of monotony yeah pattern? yeah so due to the nature of the landscape that we're living it's very difficult to be able to have access to our inner voice and so as long as you're constantly receiving input and data from other people, asking other people their opinions, looking to social media to try to find what you think you want for yourself. You're going to have a very difficult time being able to be in alignment with yourself to attract what it is that you want. So a lot of what I teach and preach with people is helping them connect with themselves, eliminating the outside influences. So that's family, that's friends, uh, that's social media and how society thinks as a whole and being able to get into touch with who they are, what they want, separate from all the other influences that are being constantly imposed upon us so they can have an idea of what they do want so they can go after it. But most people living in a state of kind of going after what they want, kind of going after what they see on social media that looks appealing or what the majority of people in their social circle think is cool or desirable. So we're living in a time where based off the nature of the technology that we have, we're very disconnected. And it's not that maybe there is an agenda out there that is really attempting to disconnect people from themselves, but I more so think it's a byproduct of the advancement in technology and the access we have to so many people. And we as humans were not created to be able to adapt to what we have right now. So our minds and, and our bodies are not 
programmed to be able to take on the new technological advances that we're living in right now. So being able to live in a time where we have no choice but to be in society, if you want to be in society, we have to learn how to be able to disconnect from the world around us, getting more in touch with our inner world, so we're able to stay in touch with what we truly, truly want, so we can find a level of fulfillment and also feel good about the life we're living. This podcast is sponsored by Physicians Preferred CBD. If you have any inflammation, if you're suffering from depression or anxiety, this helps with homeostasis, mind and mood balancing. So if you use promo code MikeBiz, you can get a 33% off discount. And this podcast is also sponsored by Adipose Beef Tallow. Really clean stuff. You can put it on your face, your body. You could even eat it. That's how natural it is. Very absorbent, very moisturizing, and it has benefits. It's good for eczema, good for stretch marks, stuff like that. So make sure you get some Adipose. And lastly, this podcast is sponsored by Faith and Base. One way to support me is to get a hat, get a shirt, get any kind of merch that we have on our website. Uh, and that's faithandbase.com. Yeah, no, I, I love that. One thing that you said that I thought was pretty powerful is for people to think about themselves and, and think about their true voice as opposed to the outside voices or their family's voices or society. What would you say is a way for somebody to say, hey, how, how can I find my voice? And, and I'm sure there's different yeah. modalities, but I'm curious about what you would recommend to somebody that you might be coaching. Yeah. So based off the nature of the demographic of people that I work with, there are people that are very forward thinking, people that are very naturally driven. Uh, they don't generally have a hard time being motivated or inspired. They go after what they want. So if you are someone like that, I would highly recommend cutting off outside influences in regard to content consumption. Mm. So if you watch a lot of podcasts, if you read a lot of books, if you are constantly scrolling through and seeing the opinions of, of other people on social media, take some time away from those things. Now, I know generally this personal development community really pushes those things and says they're really good. And now I think to a certain extent they can be in regard to educating and inspiring, but you hit a point in your development within personal development where it no longer serves you to be constantly consuming all kinds of information and all kinds of opinions of other people. So then you have to go to the place, okay, well, let me cut all of that off now and take everything that I learned over the last, you know, however many years and see how all of it applies to you as an individual, not based off of how you've seen it work for somebody else. Yeah. So it's taking all that information, removing all inputs, and then being able to put it together in a way where it fits your narrative for what's most aligned to your heart. Yeah, I I, I really resonated with, with what you said about that. As somebody that, that's a creative and a content creator, I do sometimes find myself in the trap of consuming the content, but all of a sudden I have to kind of break myself and be like, wait, I'm the creator. People yes. are going to be consuming my content. Well, what am I doing sitting around for three hours, four hours, not doing, mm -hmm. not creating? Yes. I'm, and, and don't get me wrong. I am a human. Every once in a while, okay, I, you have your guilty pleasure. You watch your show for a little bit, but you still need to do what, I mean, I'm not put on this earth to consume content, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I, there's, I have my mission and it's my podcast. It's my ministry. It's my clothing brand. It's all these different stuff. So I need to do it. I can't be stuck in that kind of monotony. It's funny. You can pull out your phone out for five minutes. That five minutes can turn to 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. If you're not relatively intentional about who you are and what you want. And that's where it gets more fun. That's where social media can be a really powerful thing. That's where podcasts and the infinite amount of knowledge that we have access to can be a really positive thing. What you need to learn more about to be mm. able to become the person that you truly desire to be. Yeah. Then you get more specific. You get more particular with the content that you're consuming. Then you can fill your feet up with content that's surrounding the types of things that you actually know you want to get good at. It's funny you said that. And I, that's where it can be really, really beneficial. I, I so was bragging. I think social media is incredible and, and all of this information is incredible if who you are what you want and you can use it to your advantage no i i love what you're saying because i was bragging to my wife the other day i was like nobody has my youtube homepage. i have the most based curated everything is so dope um but obviously i would say that right because it's mine you can't find the deep cut content that like, mainstream media propagates on my YouTube homepage. Yes, so epic. I, to me, it's, I love that. It's a curated thing, but yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a beautiful point. But so when I met you, Key, and you were talking about, you have an upcoming trip. Do you want to talk? Cause I, I know that you're a yeah. man that travels a lot. You yeah. want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. I have a, a nice little three, four day trip to Brazil. I lived there for 10 years. I'll get to go and 
coach uh, American football team that head I sponsor. coach or, or no it'll it'll be on the side I don't, All know, right. I don't know the X and O's of all the <laughs> offense they run but more of a guy that has a lot of experience and being able to provide that inspiration to the kids them knowing I'm coming which would be fun We've got a game against Mexico coming up this weekend so I'll go out to Rio and coach and maybe play a little bit too which I'm excited about and also celebrate my best friend's birthday so that'll be a fun trip I'll come back to Miami for a couple of days then pack all my stuff up my lease expires at the end of this month get my car over to a good friend of mine and then I'm off to South Dakota where I'm from for two weeks and then begins about a three and a half journey a three and a half month journey that I'm about to embark on and then you'll be back what in in, in the winter or fall beginning like of, of October yeah yep. and then yeah it's South America it's good what, what is this winter over there now or something like that? yeah yeah, no, that's cool, man. Yeah, well, I, so are you going to be, besides coaching, do you also have people that you do life coaching in Brazil? Or is that, do you mostly do a lot of that virtually? It, all virtually and then in Miami. Sometimes in Miami, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's why, that's why I came back. I was traveling quite a bit. I moved to Los Angeles, but I wanted to come back to Miami because I wanted to build my practice here and really establish myself here. So I think a lot of people are going online right now, but I've been online for a while and I wanted to really get the in-person touch again. So I have my contrast with giving in-person clients, but also online, which I'm excited about. But when I do my travels, it's, I was initially going to cut everybody as far as my clients go. I'm going to keep maybe three to four people now, I decided. But my travel time is my time of becoming. A lot of people, when they get into the spotlight, they think they have to stay in the spotlight, but mm. I know... I become better when I leave the spotlight and I allow myself to be present in new environments where I learn a lot about myself. So that's what travel is for me. It's my time of becoming more, going deeper within myself and experiencing things that I haven't experienced before to be able to come back into the world and help people navigate their own issues a little more effectively. So I'm really excited because I get to go get lost in different places with different friends at different times. But I'll finish my trip off in, uh, in Russia, and I'm going to do that solo. So Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do that for about a month to a month and a half. I have a three-year visa, but it'll be about a month, month and a half. I'm going to travel around, and i got some really cool things planned when I'm over there. Are, are you meeting with any athletes in Russia? No. No, but I might head down and do some fighting there. Yeah. Which would be cool. Yeah, no, I mean... Yeah, there's a there's a lot of cool history of of Russia. I w I would love. I mean, I haven't done it nearly as much as traveling as you, but that sounds that sounds yeah, it sounds like good life experience. I mean, for me right now, with my life experience. So I had my second second baby, young Patrick, and he's been a little angel. But with that, my first child, my daughter, man, she's going crazy with the temper tantrums and waking up in the middle of the night, all the sleep regression, and I think it's a result of the new baby. Even my dog. He's, he's pooping now inside the house, which he never did before. So it's, I have a dog that's pooping everywhere. I have, I mean, my baby's a baby, he, but he's an angel. And then my, my two-year-old is nuts. And then my, my wife is dealing with postpartum, which I mean, man, for anybody who doesn't know about that, man, women, they ha basically the way their bodies change throughout pregnancy, their mind does too. So it's a hormone dump. So it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's a, it's a lot. It's a big, big trying time for a family, especially in the beginning. So funny. You have this elation with having a kid and they're born and it's the best thing ever. And then anything in life, what comes up must come down. So I'm at a little bit of that downtime, but at the same time, I'm very blessed that I had the ability to be a father. And it, to me, it's such an amazing to be able to hold that title and that role but it's I'm really seeing what it's to to be a dad and sometimes you do the work and no one there is patting you on the back but you do it because in the end it's what you got to do and and it's truly a blessing so anyways yeah sometimes you got to go through it what do you mean? yeah and and oftentimes those are the best teachers too where you can actually learn or you learn through true application where it's your life circumstance that requires you to have to go through something if you think about it, years and years and years ago, nobody had access to the amount of information that we have today. And somehow people were able to do unbelievable things. They didn't have a ton of podcasts, they didn't have a ton of books. They had probably a lot of inspiration. They probably had a high propensity to take large amounts of risk and had a lot of curiosity within them that really spurred them into doing and learning very quickly. And I think when we can get our heads wrapped around that concept and be hold on there was a time where none of this was accessible how are those people able to do the things they did well they were so tapped into their own inspiration they didn't have 
a lot of gaps between the time when they got the inspiration, when they actually took advantage of it. They probably had a high ability to be able to not allow the idea of failure to stop them, but more see each opportunity that didn't work out the way they thought it would as a pivot mechanism. And I like to think more from that perspective because living is more fun to me than reading. So I'd rather constantly put myself in circumstances that are relatively uncomfortable for me to be able to learn from those situations so I can actually learn, not have the mental idea of how I think things work based off of a book that I read or hearing somebody else talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's interesting how sometimes you gotta, you gotta go through it to know you really do. You have and, to go through that's the living the, too, man. That's yeah, living. Yeah. Why would you want to do it any other way? Yeah. But I think people to feel comfortable with knowing they have something figured out. Yeah, the, curiously. The, the, it's kind of... Yeah, it's, oh, I know what that's... Because I read a book about it, so I don't have to do it. I don't have to do Shut it. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Go do it. Go, Go do, it. do it, right? But and that's where people will trick themselves. They'll mm -hmm. literally trick themselves into thinking they have the knowledge or understanding yeah, of something. And then all they use that for is preventing themselves from actually going and, and really doing it and figuring it out for themselves. Yeah. So they're making decisions for their life based off of everybody else's perspective of how something goes which you as an individual is completely different than the person that's telling you about that thing. So you're going to have a different experience if you try that thing. Exactly. So that, it's, that, uh, it's, well, it's really risky. What you risky. talked about is, is really funny about health, right? Health and wellness. So when I do the market, I'm selling CBD, health and wellness products, and people ask me questions and I tell them, I say, listen, everybody has a different physiological makeup. And this goes into dieting and stuff. If somebody is vegan, that works for you. God bless you. Vegan for you. Beautiful. You're a carnivore. Hey, that works for you. Great. There are some people that can't have milk. I can have milk. I, I, I like it. You know what I mean? And if I sit at the farmer's market, they look at me and I'm crazy. But it's we, all a vegan farmer's Right. It's all market. vegan, right? <laughs> but, but listen, but we, uh, what I'm saying is that we all have different bodies. What works for, for Kean, what works for someone else, we all are different. And we have to expect for our bodies to respond differently as well. So we can't yes. think everybody has a catch-all miracle. Hey, that's what works for you. God bless you. Good. Do, do what works for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 100%. <laughs> and that's one thing I always talk about all the time is know your avatar. Know your individual avatar. Spend time exploring you. Who are you? Where do you come from? What's your ancestry? Mm. Why do you think the way that you do? How did you grow up? Understand you to be able to fit your environment to support what it is that you truly want. If you don't know yourself, how are you supposed to know what you want? And the path of self-discovery is really, really everything. So you're able to understand what you want. But I think it's fun. It allows for me to have greater levels of pride also in who I am, understanding my ancestry, understanding where my family came from, and be able to show up, I think, more powerfully in my own life. Do you think that's part of your travel journey? Is that is that part of that? Maybe Absolutely. Have yeah, you been yeah. kind of so, backtracking some of your ancestry? Yep. I was able to go to, so I'm, I'm 50 shades of white. So yeah. I, I got Norwegian, I'm Irish, I'm English. I'm let's go, Dutch. let's go. You give me some of the knuckles there yeah, for the Dutch Irish and English. And let's German. Go. So okay. I'm basically everything. Yeah. So North you're what the powers that be. Hate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> had, to, had to say that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Bro. No, no, for sure. But going to those, I went to Norway, got to explore the Viking culture. I, I've always connected really deeply with the Viking culture. I have a Viking tattoo as well gnarly oh, bro yeah. so i've always been connected went to england i went to uh, amsterdam for a while too explored the dutch culture so the more connected that we can get to our ancestry and who we are the more pride we can have and thus live the most i think epic experience possible wow but we live so disconnected from our roots and our ancestry yeah. and even i want to say this too in today's world being a, a white man we're taught that we're supposed to be shamed, shameful for who we are and our privilege, but it's, I've never been more prideful in who I am. I would say in a humble way, because it's basically slapping my ancestors in the face by saying, oh, I'm going to denounce my privilege. What? They worked their asses off. My, my grandparents came to the U.S. My great great grandparents came to the U.S. when they were 16, 17 years old with nothing. And I'm sitting there saying, oh, I'm not going to take advantage fully of the privilege that you've been able to give me because the balls that you had to do the shit that you did. They'd probably slap me in the face and knock me out. What I mean, dude. So bro, you're you are preaching. It's, it's choir, disgusting bro. to me. All of that. Now I know there's a level of absence of understanding of how things work with a lot of white people that aren't re really necessarily curious about other cultures and understanding them, which I think is wrong right. in and of itself. But to denounce your privilege because 
other people don't have the same opportunities. Yo, motherfucker, my ancestors worked their asses off, yeah. put me to where I'm at right now. Yeah. And I'll never apologize l- for l- that. Look at who built all this amazing civilization. I mean, let's, let's just be real. Yeah. No, it, it, it's funny. Uh, yeah, it's society, bro, that they've psyoped off to us so much left and right. I'm 38, right? So I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. All that programming was even around back then. I mean, it's a lot more now, but it was even around back then. I've seen where it's not cool to be white pretty much my whole life Mm -hmm. coming from here from Miami. So I realized that that was indoctrination I I was born with. Mm -hmm. So my middle name's Patrick. I used to not like my middle name because it was very white. Mm -hmm. I named my son Patrick ever since I've, I've been more awakened to Mm -hmm. the psyop that that I was put under about hating my heritage and hating who I am. And really the people that control us, they, they, they don't like this. So they, they, that's all, that's all mindful and and it's all done through, yeah, all this subversion through media and whatnot. But uh, yeah, man, it's really interesting. You could take the power back. I'll tell you another one. Mm -hmm. I used to go by Mike. You play sports that I'm Mike, Mike, Mike. I started realizing there's power in names. I'm Mm -hmm. Michael. I'm embracing Michael. I'm embracing and yeah. it's the spiritual energy. There's a spiritual component too. It's I'm accepting the Michael title and it goes back to the knowledge of self of what you're talking about. Yes. Who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? What, what, what purpose do I have? And once I became more in alignment with that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a different person, bro. And, and, and I'm definitely embodying it. I'll tell you, he's not my coach, but he's certainly, uh, he's certainly acting like it. I'm definitely embodying some of the principles that, that you've been talking about. So yeah. I, I think that's why you and I, when we started chatting, I could tell, I was like looking into your eyes. That, that was kind of sounds kind of homo, but I was like looking right at Ant- you. Mantimacy. <laughs> it's mantimacy. <laughs> and I was like looking at his soul and I was like, nah, okay, this guy, is, he's with it. He knows. Mm. So that's good, bro. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. I think I think every race should celebrate themselves. Facts. I think it's great. You know, Facts. Like black, celebrate being black. White, celebrate being white. And we can all celebrate our differences. But this whole thing of only certain people can be proud of who they are, it, it's ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. So yeah. we yeah. can all celebrate our individuality. And I think celebrating our individuality brings us all together and can allow us to all fit into a greater whole not being the same, yeah. being different, but seeing how we all fit into the role of society and how to best create a happy, healthy, thriving society as individuals that are different. A hundred percent. Think about it this way. If, if God made a symphony of whatever, colors, music, shapes, if everything was the same color, the same shape, the same tone, we'd be like, oh, this song sucks, this, this design sucks, whatever. But the fact that there's so much variety, that's what makes it good. But now let's say... Th- Let's compare a white person to the color green. You have this barely green, it's white, and there's a hint of green in it because they're afraid of being a true green. A tree wouldn't, wouldn't look the same. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's being that true self for the whole picture. Yes. It's not even for yourself or for white people. It's actually for everything. Yes. Yeah. You're actually helping the whole world by being yourself. If you Absolutely. think about that metaphor. A hundred percent, man. The, the flower that doesn't allow itself to be a big, beautiful flower can't give the pollen for the bee to come that lands on it to be able to go and pollinate somewhere else. And if that flower is not allowing itself to fully be that beautiful flower that that bee can find. So I love that you said that it all, we all fit together in in a beautiful way. And that's how nature intended it was for all of us to fulfill our own roles within society. And that's where I think to another topic in regard to that, I think a lot of people that are really would be okay with the life that they're living and what they're doing. They see a lot of things on social media that, Mm. of lives of people that aren't necessarily the same as them so Mm. it'd be a flower comparing themselves to maybe a tree yeah and then that flower being what the heck why am i not Mm. doing what this tree's doing yeah and then that creates the the comparison yeah and leads you down the path of trying to be the tree but you'll never be a very good tree because you're a flower yeah i mean so it's a really i mean self-discovery self-understanding doing what you can to explore your heritage and the nature of who you are and where you come from and why yeah. you are the way you are and asking your parents about their upbringing and asking your your grandparents where they they came from and asking stories to be able to really understand all of it you can put together pieces of the puzzle to understand your own story and then mm. from there be able to thrive at the highest level because i mean that's really the source. highest yeah the source that's the highest vibration there is source it's from a place of authenticity and you can't truly be authentic if you don't understand your own avatar Mm. so people are trying to be authentic from a place of not understanding themselves so Mm. i think it's a confused vibration where that's why they don't 
really get what they want because they're putting out mixed signals. They're trying to be authentic from a place of not knowing who they are. Right. Like you can't be authentic for something that you don't understand. Yes. Right. So yes. taking the time to be able to really understand ourselves allows to us to be able to operate in that authentic manner, which is a higher vibration and love. It's funny that, that he says that there's some people that I, so since I do the farmer's market, I interact with a lot of different type of folks and there are some people when I interact with them and in their mind, they think they're being their true authentic self or whatever it is, but I could tell they're fake or there's something in them. They're psyoped by society or whatever's yeah. going on. So in my mind, I automatically look at them. They're an NPC yeah. a a and I know a non-programmable -pro character or whatever. I know as a, a man of God or a Christian or somebody has to be a good person. I cringe when I look at people that way because I want to be able to give people the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, when people are operating in this programming, it's hard for me to reach out to them because in order for me to connect with someone, I have to understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. But if they're their mind is in some other place it's hard for me to do that for sure it's so challenging i'm sure i'm sure maybe as a life coach i'm sure you yeah, how about this i'll frame it as a question what's been the one of the most challenging things for you as a life coach well really it's it's about me the challenging most challenging thing in my practice for me is consistently getting out of the way it really has nothing to do with them and when mm. i say getting out of the way i mean when i'm on my calls it's not as much about the information that I'm consciously saying, but more about letting the proper guidance and information come through me. Mm. So I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I don't have any plan going into any of my calls. It's more of me noticing my mind wanting to not allow what is trying to come through to come through. Mm. And when I allow myself to fully operate in that authentic channel where I'm not trying to manage and control the things that are coming out of my mouth, more of letting it come in and come out. I mean, there's nobody that I can't help. So that's awesome. it really has nothing to do with anybody that I work with. It more seems like it's a divine channel. Yeah, right? for sure. But then it's really me having to deal with my own understanding of my own personal avatars, insecurities and what my desires are and being able to move beyond the voices that tell me that it's not safe or OK to be able to express or say something. But the more I get out of survival in my own life, the less that I need, the higher my ability is to be able to truly say whatever's there. So that's why it's very important for all of us to understand our deeper desires for what we want, what our, our family has historically prioritized so we can understand where we have emotional attachments to certain things. So we're able to then not allow those emotional attachments to get in the way of us being able to operate in an authentic way. And those could no, be subconscious. No, that could be a yeah. subconscious thing where you're, Absolutely. you're not even, not you're, even not aware. Even, you're not even aware. Correct. So there might be someone that I'm working with that they are connected to someone that I really want to work with. And so because I really want it to work out, I might change my behavior mm. to be able to try to make it work out rather than sharing what's really present. Right. So if I'm not aware of that part of myself that is attached to wanting that person that they could potentially connect me to. Yeah. Then I'm going to fuck up the whole thing. Yeah. So I have to notice that desire I have, disregard it and allow myself to fully operate in this way where I'm willing to let go mm. of that person yeah. for authentic truth. Yeah. And that could be scary. So we have to know, we have to understand ourselves in that way. Yeah. What do I want right now? And how could I have a potential emotional attachment that's disconnecting me from source sources, inspiration? Yeah, man. And be able to disregard it and be willing to sabotage it all. Or that voice that says, Oh, I have to show up this good, nice powdered way that isn't operating in authenticity. Yeah. Well then, well, how about this? How about if you find yourself in a scenario where you want to be your authentic self, but it might be cringe, right? Maybe, yeah. right? Everybody to come across the image. Hey, I'm Keen, man. I'm an upbeat guy. Everything's going good. But maybe you got hit with a bunch of bad things happen. I'm not going to put that on you, but let's pretend. Yeah. What What do you do then in, if it, in a situation, but you still want to be your authentic self? You still want to be somebody that's a conduit for for positive energy for that person? Yeah. Well, I generally understand what I need when I'm going through something. So I know my avatar from the standpoint of, I know how much to share. I know the type of person that I have to share specific things with to be able to help me get through what I need to get through. So, but if I didn't, and I'm operating fully in a place of emotion, I'm talking to every single person about my problems, mm. trying to get them to help me yeah, solve yeah, yeah, my yeah, issues. Yeah. I'm probably going to get out of whack and not be able to show up in the way that I need to. But because I understand my avatar and very, very well, 
I know what I need to be able to process through specific things, which allows me to continue to show up in a really powerful way, regardless of my external circumstance. I like when you say the word avatar because it's basically saying a personality. But I think when you say a personality, I think of people take a lot of they hold on to that. Right. That, I, I, that's my part of my ego. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you were to attack my personality, my ego, you're attacking me. Mm. But if you were to say my avatar, that's my impression of who I think I am. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so by by using that word avatar, I think it's kind of it's pretty smart because it's a way of being able to to look at yourself in a third person perspective and not taking it from that first person as yes. an ego, right? Absolutely. And yeah. I've never thought about that right. since I've been saying that, but that's a great point. Yeah. I could not agree more. Yeah. Yeah, because if you were to talk about things particularly with me, you'd be Mike, you do this or the way that your personality does this it would hurt where you say, bro, your avatar, you're this creative <laughs> it does guy, a lot more neutral. this and that. It's yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. It's a more matter of factual, less mm. emotionally charged. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Your, your avatar has the propensity to do this or you generally do this when this happens. Yeah. And if we can understand that about ourselves, we could catch ourselves from doing the things that we know we don't really want to do. Right. But if we don't understand ourselves, we'll walk around thinking we have some element of free will, which 95% of people have no idea how to operate in free will it's very complex in the first place it's the same thing as intuition people think they're operating in intuition it takes a lot of self-awareness to truly be able to operate from a place of intu- intuition the majority of the time when people think it's their intuition it's a deeper trigger they have that is pushing them away from something that they want so it's a very difficult thing being able to operate in intuition and be able to operate in an authentic way. It takes a lot of deconstructing and understanding of the self to be able to really discern what is intuition and what is programming or our adaptations that our avatar has taken on based off of different life circumstances that that we've experienced as individuals or that our lineage has experienced that is patterns that are passed down. Epigenetics. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely, epigenetics. And that's where where my whole journey started was was epigenetics. Yeah, Dr. Bruce Lipton. No, you know, Bruce Lipton, know, but, but he's the, the father of, of epigenetics. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief, and it's pretty fascinating. That That's what got me down this path in the first place was mm. his book about yeah. epigenetics that blew my mind, how we as humans have less genes than a nematode, right, is super fascinating. And understanding, well, how are we so complex as humans compared to a nematode, which is a little fucking worm that has more genes than we do. Well, it's the amount of ways that each gene can express itself based off adapting to our environments. And so if we have less genes, that means that our environment or our perception of our environment ultimately determines most of the time how our genes express themselves. So if I'm in control of my environment and my perception of my environment, I can change how my genes express themselves. I can change my DNA, which is wild. And the science of that is what really got me into all this yeah. knowing that because I, I practiced some of the things that I learned as far as how to manipulate our, our DNA but now consciously becoming aware of it and seeing it as a science and being able to thus create our own heaven on earth so what would what, what, what would be me. what would be the a way of manipulating your DNA what would be a quick way of of, of explaining <laughs> that to, to somebody well if what allows us to manipulate a, our a de- short a short bite for viral content. No, I'm just kidding. Oh shoot, yeah, no, I'm not I'm good at that. Kidding. I wish I was better at that. <laughs> no, no, you're good. But no. if we know that we can manipulate our DNA through changing our environment and changing our perception of our environment or the things that are happening in our lives, then you can start there. You can say, well, how can I best shift how I'm looking at things to be able to look at them in a different way? to be able to allow my DNA to reflect more of a safe environment rather than a stressful environment. Because if I'm always worrying about things yeah. or I'm constantly having to think that I'm someone that has bad things happen to me all the time, yeah. that's who I am. Yeah, yeah, then yeah, my yeah. body is going to be, my DNA is going to reflect yeah. the adaptation to that type of environment. So that's where your thoughts control your, your biology. If you can change the way that you think about things then you can change the way that your DNA is replicating itself yeah. to support more of a thriving, right. happy, excited environment, then everything changes. Your immune system changes. Your of getting cancer, of getting these different diseases changes. Yeah. And uh, that's the craziest part about the good majority of cancers is that because you have cancer in your genes, based off what I spoke about, does not mean that that version of that gene will express itself. So you could have a full, think of each gene as a color spectrum. When you have black on one end, white on the other, and based off your perception of your environment and your environment, will determine what version, what color 
black to white, green, purple, blue, yellow, red, orange, all those will determine which version of the genes expressed. And so if I have cancer in the red part of the gene, but I live my life in a way that doesn't allow for that version of it to express itself, or I'm thinking in a way that doesn't allow for that version to express itself, or I'm, and I'm eating and exercising in a way for that version to not express itself, then it can be in my genome, but will not express itself, which is fascinating. Now, that's not the case with all cancers, but the good majority of the most cancers that we have, colon cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, a lot of these really prevalent ones are very much preventable wow. based off of shifting our epigenetic code which is changing the way that we're perceiving our environment and uh, changing the way that we're looking at our environment. Yeah. So, uh, guys, take, take it from an NFL player here, right? Yeah, you wouldn't expect that. I, mean, I, I was just about to say, that. I was about to say, a is, it, it, is, it, is this a big <laughs> dumb jock that doesn't know <laughs> yeah. shit or what, bro? Yeah. He's, is this Jordan Peterson or is yeah. this Keyan, huh? <laughs> but no, bro, that's, that's fascinating. It's, yeah, I mean, I, to your point about your thoughts, dictating your your reality mm -hmm. so at the market i was actually talking to a guy this this past week this old guy he's telling me how nothing works nothing works oh i tried everything i tried all the creams i go hey before you try it change your attitude mm -hmm. and then he's what do you mean i go you're already telling me it's not gonna work it's not gonna work and by the way it works for everybody but with you it's not gonna work why because your mentality yeah. and his wife and his kid everyone started laughing i go listen you have to you have to believe in it first. And then I, I and I'm not a Bible thumper at the market, but I go, listen, in the Bible, it says faith as much as a mustard seed can move a mountain. Yeah. Um, you need to have a little bit of faith, my brother. Um, listen, this can make you feel better, but I want you to believe it. He's like, OK, put it on. He's like, OK, actually, he ended up buying it. But it's not about it's not a testimonial mm -hmm. about buying things. This is more about, bro. You could you could be somebody that that the cure is right in front of you, mm -hmm. but your mentality isn't you're not unlocking. You're not able to unlock yeah. the chest. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it, it makes sense, though, if you're someone that has had a lot of very unfortunate things happen in your life and you don't have a lot of evidence to support things working out for you, then yeah, naturally trauma. you're going to be a skeptic. Naturally, you're going to be someone that is very not trusting. Yeah. And so. You have to understand that about your avatar. Have you had a lot of things not go your way in your life? Do you have a natural propensity to not think things are going to work based off of things not working in the past? Right, right. And from there... But you got to have empathy for those kind of people then. It's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, empathy, but more so helping them come to the awareness that, yeah. hey, they haven't had a lot of evidence to support the latter or the opposite of what they've been thinking. Yeah. So if they can somehow be able to mount some type of evidence to be able to support the opposite... Yeah. By being able to somewhat operate in a positive way long enough, yeah. then maybe they're able to get some evidence to support the new operating system, which is, hey, things work out for me. Hey, when I try things that yeah. someone recommends to me, they work out. Yeah. And that's not going to always work based off that because it's a lot more complex. I'd have to go deep into the psychology of, of that person, that unique individual that has those different but uh, it's a good footing to get, yeah. get yourself going in the exactly. right direction. Exactly, hundred percent. But most people identify with those voices, right? right? That guy that you're talking to. Yeah. Says, no, it, it, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Right. He's fully lost. I'm one of these guys the that it doesn't work for. Exactly. It, it He's becomes lost. His, exactly. He's identifying with the voice. But if you can somehow find a way to be able to remove yourself from the identification of that voice and look at it from bird's eye view and, be, and hear yourself speaking, you can then begin to separate from it. But that's why it can be helpful, not necessary, but helpful to be able to understand where certain ways of being come from based off of different adaptations from when we're younger so yeah. we can disassociate from it. I think that's where the real gold is. I don't think it's necessary to have to understand where things come from, but it can be very beneficial with saying, hey, my dad was someone that, was always gone and because of that i depended on women on my mom and so therefore i don't really trust men but i trust women a lot more and so i have a hard time making friends so because i don't have this trust in men so if you can understand hey because my dad was never there i overly relied on my mom you can begin to start to separate from that belief system yeah. that men aren't safe or you can't trust men yeah uh, and you would be oh shit maybe that voice that's been telling me I can't trust people is an adaptation yeah. because I learned that at this younger age, this happened. So that's why it could be so powerful. I mean, I can't tell you how many things I've unlocked in myself with understanding fundamental things of my upbringing and, and why things 
how things played out the way they did and how I adapted to certain things so I can move beyond those voices that are trying to tell me a certain truth about how things are that isn't actually true, but solely there because it was experiences that I had to support it. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have fallen a victim to to a lot of negative self-talk. And I feel like a lot of my high school and college days, that's why I have so much compassion and empathy for people that aren't there yet. Because it's like, man, I used to be you. When I see people that are kind of like that, it's like, man, I used to be one of those, oh, everything's negative. Da, da, da. And every once in a while, I could fall into the victim mentality of, of blaming people and not taking ownership. But since I'm in this mentality, I could be, whoa, 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 wait a second. All I'm doing is blaming my wife and blaming everybody around me. This is my fault. And the, the funny thing about that, here's a perfect example. If I'm fighting with my wife and I go, it's your fault. Everything's you, da, da, da. She's going to say, Mike, no, it's not. It's your fault. But if I go, what, babe? I did, didn't wake up early. I should have taken the trash out. I should have done that. Should go, what, Mike? My bad, too. I actually did mess up on this thing. And it, it's funny how... It, it takes everything out of the scenario. It's mm -hmm. so crazy. And that's between my wife. But imagine the rest of the world. When you mm -hmm. start taking ownership and stuff, if you're dealing in a business scenario, yeah, maybe that person was, or maybe X, Y, and Z, but you could have done something better too. Mm. So you take ownership on those things. Mm. And then that other person will be like, yeah, what? Yes. I, I could have given you a better deal too. What? Here's 20% or whatever it is. It, it's interesting how when you give people grace and mercy and you are the one that says, I'll take the responsibility how so many other people will want to match you. They'll want to match you on that. Yeah. Beautifully said. Right? Yeah, yeah I can, I can agree <laughs> more, man. You said it. You wrapped it up perfectly. That was incredibly said. Thank you, my brother. Yeah. Thank you. So listen, you seem like you're very locked in with, with your, your soul, your spirituality. As somebody that faith-based, self-proclaimed Christian, all this stuff, tell me about where you are with God, with, with your upbringing. You maybe did you grow up Christian? Where you are now with, with your God? I mean, do you pray or, or do you read the Bible? Do you read other stuff? Do you read? I mean, you seem to be locked in with God, but, uh, but I'm curious to, to know where you're at as far as your faith walk or whatever you care to share. You know what I mean? Yeah, I grew up Christian. I grew up teaching Sunday school in high school. I mean, I'm not going to say I was a saint. I would go out and do things, but I would also teach Sunday school. Involved in some ministry type stuff in the beginning of college. But as college went on, I started to find some discrepancies, I would say, in the word that I never really resonated with. And then once college ended and my football career ended, I moved, moved to Miami, got out of the environment that I was in. I allowed myself to dabble and play in getting away from the church and allowing myself to exist in a place where. I didn't have to follow the rules of, of Christianity, but really explore the space of what it looked to exist beyond it. And for a while, it was difficult because I had to deal with what it felt to potentially be condemned to hell forever. And realizing how deep that programming was, I was, oh my gosh, there's so much fear there. It's it's unreal. So I came to a point where I moved beyond that. But I actually, too, I went to a place where there I went and said, hey, there's no God. And I went all the way there and got, got lost in that experience of that. And instead of going to prayer, I would go to myself and say, hey, what am I avoiding? What do I need to confront? And take radical accountability instead of giving it up to God. Because I think a lot of people can do that, that are deep in religion. They can, instead of take accountability for some of the things that are happening, they say, God, let me give it to you. Yeah, give me the answers and then yeah. not doing any of your part. Right. But I did find that going to that place was a little bleak and it was oh well if nothing matters and there's nothing Nihilism. that exists yeah it really doesn't do a whole lot for me mm. this really doesn't serve me to think like this mm. so if i went there and i experienced it and i completely separated from from christianity i was well if this doesn't serve me what will serve me and i was okay well i want to believe in god i do believe in god but i didn't attach a religion to it so i think some people call it agnostic but it's a belief in a power that exists beyond me i don't think i am god i believe that there's powers that are much more powerful than me that when i put myself in the right situation i can allow those powers to shine through me and i have a very very deep connection with god on a daily basis not from a religious context yeah yeah no i mean the, the the way the way that you talk about channeling and and being being a vessel and all that stuff I feel like it sounds like you're a Christian by saying that because it's the I way get that, I get that all the time. You should hear my mom. It, it, she it, does the same thing. It's the way could <laughs> know because the reason why is 
I'll be talking to my other buddies that are that are close with, with God too, and I'll be like, I got a download, and they'll be, what is it? I'll be, bro, God told me that I need to do X, Y, and Z. And a normal person hearing that, they'll be like, Mike, what the fuck are you smoking? What are you talking about? But like to my boys that are deep, yeah. like, like they'll be like, if he told you, go for it, Mike. And, and and the crazy part is, is that every time I follow through, it's that was the way I should have gone. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's really wild. And then there's that Bible verse, James 4, 8, come, come near to God, God will come near to you. And Really, I've, I, I, I say it like this. With Jesus flipping the tables in and, and, and the temple because they were doing commerce and stuff, I really feel this is the church. Jesus intended for the church to be regular people saying the good news and preaching what God is really about, not the stale stuff that's inside of a, a stale church. Because how many people need God, sinners, all of us, but they, they won't step foot in a church? They'll step foot in a kava bar, though. They'll, they'll, they'll talk to a guy like you and me, and they'll see that we're not holier-than-thou kind of guys. So I feel that's, in my opinion, you don't say you're a Christian, but it's by, by living it. by that, That's true Christianity. That's the real Christian, bro, yes. Like in my opinion. Like, yeah. Living it, that is a Christian, not somebody that says they are. And then what are you doing, bro? You watch football, you're cussing, you're, you're, you're talking shit about your wife, you're doing X, Y, and Z. Say, bro, you're not a Christian, bro. Yeah. You got to actually live it, bro. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's where what I always say is regardless of what anybody says as far as what they believe in, what I look at is how much do they cling to life? How much do they try to control everything in their life? And that one metric to me tells all about someone's actual connection with a power that exists beyond them. No matter what anybody says, how much do you cling? How much are you able to let go? And that, to me, that's faith. And that, to me, is the greatest demonstration of uh, a belief in a higher power that we could give. Amen. Amen. And if God's everywhere, he sees us. So that's why sometimes people are, oh, is the secret sauce this, that, and the other? Oh, do I need to pray? Do I need to do this? It's like, bro, God's going to meet you where you're at. If he's seeing that you're trying to make a sign to him, in a, in a genuine way, he's going to accept that. He's going to be able to answer that call. It's really a beautiful thing. I, I, I could definitely tell you're locked in. Whether you call yourself a Christian or fall into the labels, if anything, this guy's more of a Christian that doesn't even want to claim it than <laughs> a lot of you people out there. But uh, anyways. No, I, I, my biggest thing, man, is I refuse to believe that the only way to achieve you know, eternal life is through Jesus. I think... That idea is ludicrous. Right. But outside of that, I mean, my mom says it all the time. I get people all the time, even clients that are Christians. Are like, Dude, you preach the word better than people that I know. Well, I'm not intentionally doing that. I, I'm tapping into something more that exists beyond me, and it happens to be the same beliefs that, that they're referring to. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, well, but that's the funny thing about the truth, right? Yeah. Truth is truth is butter, bro. It's There's nothing. You can put butter on anything. and it, It's the truth. You can't. It's, yeah. it, it, it stands alone. It's the truth. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter whose mouth, whatever it's coming from. The truth is the truth, bro. You For know sure. what I mean? So. Yeah, and I, and I get clients that become even better Christians after working with me who's not, I'm I mean, proclaimed agnostic. And it's funny to see them actually get deeper into their faith through working with someone that is not Christian. Right, you know but I mean? you're telling them to, to look inside <laughs> themselves. And, and that's to, it. Well, that's what Jesus really to... taught them. Jesus taught that the kingdom is inside of them. Right. The book of Thomas, I don't know if you've heard of it, the Gospel yeah. of Thomas. It's not included in, in the Bible. It should be. It was found much later. But A lot of good sayings it from ta Jesus. It talks, yes, it talks much deeper about not the skewed version that the, uh, humans Paul. decided what was going to be in the Bible, right? but actual words, the words of Jesus. That's all yeah. it is. That's all yeah. the book of Thomas is. There's no flow or anything to it. Direct phrases I love it. of Jesus. And it talks much more about this idea of the kingdom being inside and, and self-discovery and understanding the self and, and that being the ultimate form of achieving eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. It's deep. There's so much to unpack there. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I let that one mic drop a little bit because I agree on that one 100%. What else do I got for you, bro? So tell me, bro, the NFL stuff. Did you play college ball and then you went to the pros? That's how your yeah. path went? Yep, yep. I played four years at Division One college football program. Didn't get drafted. I went undrafted. Got picked up by the Chiefs. Got cut. Got picked up by New Orleans. Got cut. Then I got signed the third preseason game in my first year. 
Through New Orleans again? No, Kansas City. Kansas oh, City called oh, me back. Oh, okay. Yep, they had an injury, and they called me back. And uh, before I was able to play, they had me do some precautionary MRIs. They do all kinds of tests, man. They're going to invest millions of dollars into you. They're going to test the shit out of your body to make sure everything's running properly. And I had a couple MRIs done on some past college injuries. They found that my neck injury that I had, that I never had a direct terrible injury. It was more persistent pain that I had. was much worse than I thought. And they said I was at a risk factor of 3.5 out of 4 to get paralyzed if I would have played. So before I was ever able to actually play a game, I practiced a lot. I was My career was finished wow wow and that, that was that a tough one for you because i mean you worked so long to get to that one goal and then that kind of got the rug got pulled out from underneath you so to speak was that a tough one yes and no in the moment absolutely because i was riding an emotional roller coaster of fuck i finally made it let's go but then after i settled down a little bit and went and had a bite to eat in kansas city by myself and i felt a little bit of relief I put a lot of pressure on myself to to be what I had become. I worked so hard and to take a breath felt kind of good, but I'm also very much an adapter. So my dad is very much the same way. So I take what's in front of me as far as the cards that are dealt and I play the hand. That's kind of how I've always been. So football was done in that moment and there's nothing else I could do. My agent's like, dude, you're done. You could somehow find a way to get surgery, but if you don't make it your first year, then you're making it slim to none. And I don't want to go through that. So when I knew football was done, it was over. I at least knew that I gave everything I could. Did you already? Did you get, get the there. Did you get the surgery or no? no? I didn't need it. And I actually got MRI two weeks ago, and my neck fused itself. It's they said it's really good, fantastic, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the body can repair itself. It's fascinating. Yeah, and that was what happened. Wow, man. Well, it was your path all along that God set out for you. you yeah, know? I think so. My parents always said they're. Like, he got you there to show you what you're capable of, but it wasn't really my path. So yeah. I have so much persistence, man. Persistent motherfucker and what I yeah, want. Well, so that's you, all right, you're going to be that crazy to, to get it? Because I, mean, I went through so much, man, in the process of getting there. I'm a kid from South Dakota, white kid from South Dakota. You know, I got to earn every little bit that I get, all the injuries, all that kind of stuff. So... And what position were you? Linebacker. Bro, come yeah. on, dude. Zach Thomas or something, bro? Or, or Luke Keekley. Oh, Luke, Luke Keekley. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm a little taller than Zach Thomas. That yeah. was a bowling ball. Yeah, bro. But, yeah, I could. I laid the wood, man. That's what I did. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, man. That's uh, savage. Yeah, bro. You got to be. You got to be. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty dope, bro. I mean, it, it, it shows that, that in life, you don't know which way you're going to go. But if you continue moving one foot in front of the other... Guys that have a really dope plan Damn. for you, bro. Even look at, I'm sure there's NFL guys that probably wish they were you. You know what I mean? All the shit that you're doing. How many athletes, when they're done, they, they don't know how to recreate themselves? You you Most. you were already doing that. When did you start doing the life coaching and stuff like that? Was that was that right after? Yeah, because I was a finance major in college, so I thought I wanted to do that. But when it became a reality, I was there's not a chance I'm doing that. So literally, I don't have the story of living a life where I was doing what I didn't want to do. I've always only done what I've wanted to do. So I've always, I would say, had a lot of access to that. You have siblings? Yeah. Oldest of four. So yeah. you got a little bit of the independence from being the oldest child. But yeah, oldest of four. Family lives in South Dakota still. Be excited to go visit them soon. Wow, yeah. So you're the big brother, huh? Damn, yep. okay. Well, Yeah, I'm the one that went out, the one that's the, the test dummy for everything. My youngest brother, he gets to see the crazy life that I live and gets to learn a lot from me. But, yeah, I'm, I'm the experiencer. I go out and see what life's all about and test all the different things, and he gets to learn through me. So I push him to go experience things for himself, though, which takes us full circle into what we were talking about in the beginning of full circle. giving himself permission to go experience not through me but through himself. No matter what I say, go go try it yourself. Go see what happens. Cause is he an athlete, too? Or? He was. Yeah, but he's a genius. He's more of his mind is incredibly yeah. smart he's, oh a, he's, a, he's into epigenetics or <laughs> I've, he's learned a lot from me i've taught him a lot about it but yeah he's more of a genius i was more gifted i think physically but uh, he was a great athlete but his mind is yeah wild yeah yeah that's awesome bro it sounds like you're proud of your family and that, bro it goes back to the things bro knowing yourself and all that kind of stuff and yeah for people that have stuff where they're where they're not so tight with their family you could tell there's hurt there and there that's al almost things you got to work through trauma and things yeah. like so going back to being that version of yourself or your yourself and all this kind of stuff that 
family, all that kind of stuff is part of it, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 100%. And yeah. that's where, man, I'm so blessed and grateful to have the family that I did. They always pushed me to do what I felt was right. They always supported me. We didn't have money, but my dad somehow found a way to, yep. to support me and the things that I wanted for myself. And I'm going to be able to take all of the programming that I received of permission to pursue what my heart desires. And now I get to give that gift to whoever decides to work with me. So thank God I had a family that really supported me throughout all of the process. And I can implement that operating system into the people that work with me that didn't have the opportunity to receive as much support. So yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I remember asking you this, but to ask you now, you, you get most of your clients through word of mouth, through internet? Yeah, so word of mouth. Yeah, P, yeah, word of mouth. The great part is I don't depend on social media to get clients. It's my, my practice is offline, but it's a great way for people to be able to see what I'm about and connect with me. So there's some people I get through social media too, but most of it's my, my best clients are through referrals. Cool. Yeah. Where, where could people find you or, or learn more about you and stuff like that? My website, keenloggy.com or Instagram, official Kean, which I'm sure Mike will put the, uh, the spelling in the show notes. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, the, but before we wrap it up, because yeah, sometimes I forget to do this, but this is faith and base. You got the faith part. We talked about that base, yeah. man. I mean, your base of reality, you know, what's up, what's happening, your base, right? So with that being said, we'll go down the, a little bit of the conspiracy rabbit holes Let's do and it. stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so how about, well, here's one that's, that's my, one of my favorites. What, so what are we on right now? Is it globe? Is it flat? Are you, are you into any of that or no? <laughs> no. You're I not mean, into that one? No. I globe. think I, I globe. Yeah. You say I'm going to say globe, but I'm, I haven't, you haven't looked into it deep, 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 deep into deep? it, but I would say globe globe. All right. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Yeah. I'm a flat guy, by the way, I'm a flat guy. Everybody do, you, do, you, do your research. It's all right. We'll, 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 we could talk more about that one later, Yeah. but okay. Let me think of what other ones I got for you here. Cause I, that's usually one I get people talking for a while. Do you have one off the bat conspiracies? Yeah. You got it. Maybe nine 11. I don't know. Nine 11. So did, 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 did that one wake you up? First of all, how old are you? 30. 30. Okay. So Loose Change. Did you ever see that documentary? Loose Change? No, but I've okay, seen so, quite so, a bit. So that was a conspiracy documentary. That one kind of woke me up a little bit when it came out. I feel like you get lulled back to sleep at some point. At least I did. And then I feel the CVID 2020, that kind of re woke me up again. But yeah. So, so how about this with, with the 9-11? Th did, a, did a plane hit the tower or no? I don't know if the plane hit or not, but it's more of the source of what actually yeah, caused yeah, it. Yeah. And I don't think we could deny some of the facts surrounding the guy that owned the building, took an insurance policy out a few months before yeah. it went down on specifically on terrorism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the insurance yeah. policy against terrorism. Yeah. And which I don't think that can be. Ignored. Yeah. There was like a very famous law firm. I forgot the name of it that basically every, employee wasn't there that day minus yeah. a couple of people i'll say another one so so the weapons of mass destruction right that was the term they used to to get us into the war in iraq but it started with the 9-11 if it was 9-11 and then it was oh weapons of mass destruction and then boom war in iraq so they never found any weapons of mass destruction but in the hillary clinton emails right the mm -hmm. emails the sort of true emails that was the the trump thing or whatever in her emails, they talked about the body of Gilgamesh, which was a huge Babylonian prince guy. But if you really go deep into it, he was this very tall guy. Long story short, people think that he's a Nephilim, a fallen angel, offspring of a fallen angel, a Nephilim. And so one of the first places we did when we went into Iraq was that we went to where Gilgamesh's body is and we ex excavated Gil the body of Gilgamesh. And that's in Hillary Clinton's emails. Why? And, well, if you want to, if you want to ask a regular person, or you want to ask. I'm me asking with, you. With my you throw it on. So the, the reason why is that we're trying to extract DNA from Gilgamesh so that we could bring back some of these, I don't know, demonic fallen angel offspring Nephilim things, and wow. that's and that's what they're they're trying to create now. Boom! Conspiracy Crazy. rabbit hole for you guys to check Love out. It. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. To me, it's interesting. The more you learn about information, the more you realize that we don't know anything. And yep. then you more and more, you're learning and learning. And to me, it's, it's a game of maze. 
did I did did I did I end up in a in a dead end and I'm wrong and I'm stupid? Okay, but at least I'm on the path for truth. I'm trying. Yes. Th- I know I'm being lied to. Now me me searching the truth. Okay, fine. Maybe I'm dumb at a few points, but my heart is searching for the truth. And I think that that's all you could do as a human in this earth. Listen, but I don't know all the answers. I don't think anybody does. But we follow our heart. We try to listen to what's right, and we also try to preach the truth to other people so that we all try to be our best self. And right, that's about it. One hundred percent. And that's I think the biggest takeaway with conspiracy stuff isn't maybe necessarily having to be one hundred percent right about all of them, but coming to the awareness that all of the information that we consume is strategically planted for us to see it in a certain way based off how the news puts it out. So 100%. if we can understand that core principle, then we can learn that, hey, we can't put our faith in this big organization or the powers that be to really look out for our best interests. So what does that mean? You have to take personal accountability and responsibility for yourself. So you can go down the rabbit hole like over here. Or if you don't want to go down the rabbit hole, take from it what you need, which is, hey, whether all this conspiracy stuff is true or not, a lot of it is true. And I can't trust the powers that be with my life. And I have to take my life into my own hands. Amen. That's why you got to buy guns, grow your own garden. That's it. <laughs> do, <laughs> do it all yourself, bro. Live off the land. Before we go, Kian, what, uh, dude, what shirt size are you, bro? Uh, large. I got a little a gift for you. You're a large? What I got here, my brother. Let's Excellent. go. Oh, we got a large. All right, we got to serve other Ooh. shirt for you, my brother. Come on. Because you're serving people. So that's, that's a little that's gift. Awesome. There we go, bro. On, Let's Merry go. Right? So he's a good dude. You got to bless good folks. But, bro, th- thanks for hopping on my podcast. So, it's Kian. A pleasure, brother. Yeah, of course, bro. So, once again, Kian, you got to look him up. It's official. Kian on Instagram. I'll put it on into the description. And your website is, my brother? KianLoggy.com. KianLoggy.com. All right. Well, I guess that's it, guys. Have a blessed day. Take care, y'all. Peace.